All right, once again, I am here to change your life. Let's say you have a shoot coming up and you don't know exactly what lights you need. Today, I'm gonna to show you two ways to approach a situation like this in the beginning of my career where I was moving from just winging it to actually beginning to somewhat understand what I was doing. I always found it tough to make the lighting list. I was beginning to start to develop a style and kind of knew what I wanted things to look like, but just didn't really know which lights to go with. Specifically, I had a scenario where we were in a studio, we needed to shoot at 96 frames a second, and I knew I wanted to be around a five six or an eight, 30 people in like a 30 or 40 foot width. And there were multiple layers of people and I wanted everything to be pretty much in focus. There are two apps that you can use to really help you out with this. There's a feature in Citus Link that can do this and there's Airy Photometrics. So we'll start by considering this in a studio because the studio is simple to understand. It's a person and a background, kind of like how I am right now, but this can be applied to any room, any interior or even exterior. So first we're gonna look at the Airy Photometrics app. This is free on the app store and I wanna go with like a bright sunny look. So I'm gonna hit Daylight, and I'm gonna go for an HMI. I'm gonna start with the lower M8, which will probably be fine for this, at least for the talent. In this app, you can set up your camera. Also, this is just good for comparing different lights. If uh, a light comes out and it says that it is 2000 lux at one meter, you can kind of see what that compares to with an airy light or an aperture light in these two softwares. but for now we'll go back to setting up the camera. I'll shoot at 800 to keep things simple, 180 degree shutter, 96 frames per second. The filter factor is if you wanna put diffusion in front of the light, which will cut down your light. We'll keep it at 100% right now. So this is considering that we are putting a light with nothing in front of it pointed directly at the talent, which I've done a lot and I love that look. So camera is set. As we drag any one of these, it moves everything else exactly. So it doesn't quite matter which one of these you drag, but I want to be at an eight. So I'm gonna drag this until the, our lens aperture hits an eight. And you can type in numbers in here. Like if I wanted three meters, I could just type three. And you can go metric or imperial. In order to get an eight, we have to be three meters away with this light or 10 feet. That's a little close for this light. To have a light 10 feet away blasted directly at the talent is probably not so good. Fall off will not really be how it should be. The light will just be too close. Let's go up to an M40 so we can get that a little bit further away. Our camera is still set and I wanna be in an eight. So I'm gonna drag any one of these and go down to an eight and that's eight meters away. So 25 feet away. So that's a little bit more doable. In this scenario, I would ask myself, is an M40 gonna bother the talent at that frame rate? Do I really need to be at an eight? This is why a lot of times when you see stills, everything is in focus, and then you see video from the same campaign and the background is all blurred, which always bothered me and something that I try to avoid when I am working in a scenario where I am shooting video, but there's also stills attached to that campaign, but most people probably don't notice that. So let's just say that this is gonna be okay. So I'm gonna test this out in Satellite 3D, my favorite software for also being prepared. I have a full overview of this software on this channel and it's really great. And I use this for most shoots. So I'm gonna put the talent two meters away from the wall and I will put an M40 in here. And I like to shoot the face at 135. I just happened to land on a frame like this once and it was at 135 millimeters and I was like, this is amazing framing for faces. So that's what we'll do. So she is two meters off the wall and we need to be eight meters away from her. I will make an eight meter long piece and I'm gonna place this right here and I'll keep it flooded. It's eight meters away from her, 800, 180 degrees, 96 frames a second. I can't choose 96. Let's see what I do if I change this to 120. So we'll need to be at a T7. Back to the camera, T7. And 
we have this where her exposure looks good. The satellite 3D is pretty good for determining the actual output of lights. I would also trust Aries photometrics because that is what they do. So now what we can do is look at treating the background. So let's say I wanna keep a white background, but I wanna have full control over how bright it is. I'm gonna pull everything way off the background. Our background has gotten darker. Let's just say that we want it to be exact. She needs to move around a little bit or there's more people in here. So we couldn't have her only two meters off the background. We don't wanna see her shadow. We can treat the background separately. In order to have a one-to-one -one ratio where it looks all kind of in the same world and it's lit by the same light source, we will go back into photometrics and see what we can do to light the background also to be at a T7. I'm gonna look at a uh, sky panel and see what we can do there. S60, I need this to be at a T7. And we were like at a 7.1. So this needs to be 1.63 meters away and it will have a four meter beam diameter. So we might be able to do this with sky panels, but since I don't think it will be enough, since it only has a four meter beam diameter and I want the background to be completely even, let's just bump up to 360 and let's see what we get at a T7. 3.5 meters away. And that's an eight meter diameter or almost nine. So I think this will work. So I am going to point this towards the wall. And again, this is just so that I can get my lighting list and be confident about that. The exact reproduction of light and how it bounces around this room might be a little bit different just because this is 3D software. It just gives me the confidence to go in and know that I have the right light fixtures on the order. So I'm gonna add another one. Even not checking the distances of those lights, this looks good to me. So I would just say, yeah, we're good. And I also know that we'll be good just from using these lights and being familiar with them. Here, I would say, yep, what we want for this is an M40 and two sky panel 360s. Let's see if we move this in even more. I'm just gonna get it right out of frame and I'm gonna turn off this light right here. And I'll bring this one just into frame and I'll kind of just point this in the middle, point this in the middle. And we needed a distance of 3.5. So I'll just bring it 3.5, 3.5. And we will turn back on our key light and we have this. Now we have a one to one ratio and we can move forward knowing that we have the proper tools So I have to go to Costco right now, but when I come back, I will show you Citus Link and how Photometrics is built into that. And then I will show you how we can apply what we found in either one of these softwares to use and understand how much light we need from a light that's not included in the two softwares. So I will see you in a minute. Okay, back from Costco, I got the pinwheels and leveled off the first row while waiting in line. Anyways, I just wanna show the Citus Link app also has a built-in photometrics tool that is similar to the one we just looked at. So if we go to Illumination Handbook, similar look, and we have Aperture and Amaran, and I will go to Aperture 300D. We can see the specs. Let's add a Fresnel, and we can say Flood or Spot, and we can slide our distance. And then when we wanna go to dial in our camera settings, we can go to Lens Aperture, click the little camera icon button. I'll go to 800 ISO. I wanna be at 180 degrees, and I wanna shoot 96 frames a second. That light died, but I guess we'll just keep it rolling like this. So 96 frames a second, maybe I'll turn up my brightness a little, yeah. Okay, this looks cool. Settings are dialed in and we can see that as we change our distance, it will change our f-stop. 300D with the Fresnel flooded at 3.1 meters away, our exposure will be an eight. And this is also at 96 frames a second. So it's basically the same thing as the Airy Photometrics app, but you can look at all of the aperture lights. So this is a really good way that you can one, know if a light fixture will give you enough exposure. And then as you get used to this, you will just know that 600 lux is this T-stop. 
you can also use this to, as I showed before, treat your background to maintain lighting ratios. You don't really need to do this for every single project, but if you get to something where you are a little bit beyond what you have experienced before, I find that this comes in really handy to understand and accurately select the lighting fixtures that you might need. And in addition to that, you can just compare, like in this app right here, you can compare different lights. So I'll just click a random one and MC. I'll select these. It's kind of hard to see here, but we can see how much more powerful P300 is than the MC. All right, so this is the perfect scenario for showing something like this. Let's say we're shooting this product. We wanna see this in focus. I'm gonna bring this to a T8. That looks acceptable to me. Doesn't have to be fully in focus, but it can't be like this. Even if it was here, that would be okay. So we need to be able to shoot at a five, six or an eight, but I'm gonna say an eight. The bathroom lights are on right now, but I'm only looking at the focus. So to get to a F8, the MC Pro is 960 lux. So we need 960 lux out of this light. So we could do the calculation to figure out how far away this light needs to be to get 960 lux. And this is the equation to figure out what distance we need the MC20 to be from our product to have accurate exposure. So we need 960 lux. The M20C is 1950, let's say 2000 lux at 0.5 meters. So the calculation works nicely when we're dealing with one meter. So when you double the distance, you quarter the illumination. So the M20C would be 500 lux at one meter. How do we get to 960? We take the square root of our lux at one meter divided by our target lux equals our new distance. So we will take the square root of the lux at one meter, which is 500, divided by our target lux, which is 960, and that will equal our new distance. So 500 divided by 960 is 0.52. So we need the square root of 0.52 equals our distance, 0.72. So 0.72 equals our distance. This M20C will give us 960 lux at 0.72 meters, and that is where we will put it, and that will give us nice, accurate exposure on our product. So I'm gonna put us at a T8, and I have a tape measure with inches, so. So I'm gonna place this light 28 inches away from this, and we will be accurately exposed. And if we're not, I'm not gonna post this video. I am going to turn off the house light. We are at 100% pointed right at it and we're at a T8. That is very nicely exposed. I'm looking at the false colors and the exposure looks great there too. We have a properly exposed image without any experimentation whatsoever, just checking on the photometrics and placing the light exactly where it needs to be. So we have this in focus right here and this in focus right here. This is where it helps to be exact because I have literally perfect exposure on these two products. And I know that if this is the only light I can use, as long as the quality of light is okay at the 0.72 meters away that we are, and that we like how that looks, it will be enough light to expose the scene properly to get us to be able to shoot at the right stop. If we want to add to the background or have complete control over it, we could, I just have my hand flagging off the light off the background. We could just flag off the back, have more control over the light. This is just with nothing on it, but we could have more control over the light so that we can treat the background exactly as we want it treated and do the same thing where we could say we want a two to one ratio or two stop ratio. Also the noise that you've been hearing is this guy. Say, hey buddy. I need a witty ending. Okay, so this is just something that can really help you out to be more calculated and achieve like more perfect results and kind of like achieve what's in your head. You don't always need to be exact and perfect, but sometimes you do. And as you grow, if you're newer in this industry, as you grow in your career, you will find yourself in scenarios where you do need to be more perfect at times. It's a bit easier if you can do these calculations and just know this is the light that I want to put here. I know it's going to be bright enough. I know it's going to work. And you just go in confidently and you don't need to figure anything out. It will just help you to, you know, possibly improve what you're doing 
and have a little bit more intention because I see a lot of stuff out there that lacks intention and that moment when you don't know what to do and there's a lot of people around you, it, it like is crushing. And if you go into it with a plan, knowing that what you have is right and possibly doing a little previs in the software, it's just a much better day and your end product will be so much nicer and the crew that you're communicating with will so much more appreciate you when you know exactly what you want. Five shoots ago, I had one of the grips come up to me after the shoot and say, I loved working with you. I loved how you knew at every time just exactly what you wanted to do and there was no flip-flopping around. It was great to hear that because I did know exactly what I wanted every single time just from planning and doing a little bit of work like what I've showed you here today. So implement it and maybe you will notice an improvement in your work. Okay, that's it. Peace.